So I am a drill sergeant dad. I was in the military and I had a couple kids. I had a daughter who I rarely disciplined and a son who I was way too hard on. I actually used Jordan Peterson's advice without even meaning to. I was harsh on anything I didn't like and often way too harsh. So here's my story, which illustrates exactly where Jordan Peterson's advice can go wrong. As Christians, we really need to be discerning when it comes to Jordan Peterson. Yeah, he has some really good advice, but if there's one major issue I have with his advice is that it isn't always biblical. If your family's had issues with disciplining your kids and problems being on the same page, uh, you know, you and your wife being on the same page, then you understand how it destroys the peace and love and fellowship in your household if you can't get discipline right. So here's my story, which illustrates exactly where Jordan Peterson's advice can go wrong. So I am a drill sergeant dad. I was in the military and I had a couple kids. I had a daughter who I rarely disciplined and a son who I was way too hard on. I actually used Jordan Peterson's advice without even meaning to. I was harsh on anything I didn't like and often way too harsh. I would nitpick everything my son would do. I was way too hard on him at a young age and it was very discouraging for him. I honestly thought I was being the type of dad I needed to be, but I was really just being a jerk. And I wasn't even harsh with my daughter, but it had a major impact on my relationship with her because she was scared to get yelled at. So I wasn't building confident kids and I didn't realize that I was just overreacting to how my parents disciplined me, which was oftentimes just way too lax and inconsistent. So I disregarded at this point what my wife said because we weren't on the same page. So she then in turn, because I wasn't honoring her, she would overcompensate and not discipline my son, even if he needed it. So it got pretty bad. We had a home where there was not very much peace. We were constantly disagreeing about this stuff. And I knew something had to change, but I didn't really know what. There are actually relatively few examples of good biblical parenting that I saw, and you don't really see into other people's homes all the time. So I had to learn a lot of this from books, which made things more confusing at first. And then I found the right resources to help me apply biblical wisdom to my household, and I couldn't believe how it changed. I mean, it was a complete 180. So I have another younger son now I've done a decent job with and have since repaired the relationships with my older son and, and set my relationship with my daughter back where it needs to be. So it's turning out really good, and that's a good thing, but that, that's not the way to do it. So when I tell you I learned this the hard way and by the grace of God, I, I really mean it. The best resources I've found uh, for this are actually from Doug Wilson on having a loving, God-fearing family. So Jordan Peterson's standard can be misapplied, obviously, as can biblical wisdom, I'll give you that. But that's why it's so important to start with faith in Jesus Christ and a biblical worldview. Because as Christian parents, you need to apply the Bible. You need to be an example, and you need to be on the same page as your wife. Jordan Peterson's standard is simple. Don't let your children do anything that makes you dislike them. And I'll give you, this is way better than secular standards of gentle parenting, but at the same time, it falls way short of biblical standards. Jordan Peterson's obviously getting at a practical way to discipline your kids in a loving way. But as I said, it still falls, short, falls way short of a biblical standard. And I'm not a dummy. You could tell me I was applying his advice wrong or not in the right context, and that's very true. But then what you're also implying is that I wasn't backing up how I was disciplining with the right standards. And I completely agree. The standard should always be the Bible, not your personal preferences. So how do we apply the Bible to parenting? Well, to start, the Bible should be the standard and not us. Sure, we can misinterpret, overcomplicate, oversimplify. We can take verses out of context. We can divorce disciplining our kids from love, grace, and mercy. And we won't always get it right, but we need to do it because we're teaching them one way or another. Proverbs 13, 24, whoever spares the rod hates his son, but he who loves him is diligent to discipline him. Now, this isn't a license to beat your kid, but spanking is biblical and it can be used to good effect. How to deal with emotions, how to deal with sinning against others, the right attitude for us to have is all in the Bible. We need to live out those examples from the Bible. You see, God gave us an example in Jesus Christ, but we are the example that God gave to our children. If we want to raise God-fearing dragon slayers, we need to take this to heart. Many people know the great Shema in Deuteronomy 6, but many people don't recognize that this is actually about educating your children. 
Deuteronomy 6.1 says we need to do what God tells us. We need to live it out. And later in the Shema, Deuteronomy 6.7, it, it says to teach this to our children. And the best way to teach is by example. We also need to remember why we are disciplining. We're called to obey God. And God gives us practice in obedience with honoring our mother and father. Discipline is about loving and doing the best for your children. You always need to stop and ask, is this discipline making my child better? Is it about them? Is it the loving thing to do for them? And one red flag here is that you actually discipline your kids every time you want to. Often you shouldn't discipline when you want to, when you're angry or upset about something they did. If you're doing discipline right and actually being proactive about it, then often you'll be disciplining your kids when you don't want to. Families and households are foundational. And so the Bible expects a man and a woman in marriage in a house. Because men are harsher and women are softer, you need both of them for balance. In fact, one of the biggest blessings I've had in this journey to get better about this is my wife, who has balanced me out far better than I could do on my own, obviously. And once we got on the same page, that is really when things started to change for the better. They changed a little bit when I took care of my own sin and when she was taking care of her own sin. But once we combined our efforts and got on the same page about this, it was a night and day difference. I figure I'll be coming out with a few more videos on this topic. I, I think because it's one of the areas that I feel like I, I have improved on and, and it's made such a big difference. Family life is the area where every single Christian man can take the reins, make life better for their wife and their children, which makes life better for themselves. It's the single most important battleground these days. So here's some of the books that changed how I approach this. I'd recommend you read these. How to Be Free by Jim Wilson. You literally can't be a good dad if you aren't living like a Christian. And if you are a Christian, you need to be free of bitterness, anger, and lust. So. This is a book that will help you slay your dragon so you can teach your kids how to slay theirs, whether it's a bad attitude or disobedience or whatever it is. You have Federal Husband by Doug Wilson, and this is a book about the understanding of what it means to be the federal head of your family and lots of practical ways to start taking responsibility for your family. You have Decluttering Your Marriage by Doug Wilson, which is how to make sure your marriage is peaceful and the rock that your family is built on. If you have boys... I highly recommend a book called Future Men. Raising boys can be hard, and this puts a good perspective on the outcomes you're going for and how to, how to raise them right. Finally, I'll mention the book Foundations for Fathers, and this is also by Doug Wilson. I know I'm playing favorites, but really these are the absolute best books I've read on parenting, and they're dripping with biblical worldview and references to help you apply them today, the minute you start reading them. So that should be enough to get you started. Discipline is necessary and we need to do it right. One of the biggest witnesses we have in the world right now is looking different, whether that's ourselves, our families, our churches. As people, we need to live the way God tells us and we need to, we need to exhibit that joy and peace that only Jesus Christ provides. And the best way to exhibit that joy and peace in our families is by disciplining the way that God tells us to.